Okay, this morning we're going to be looking at um, just a few verses of Luke chapter 12, and this is going to be the first part, uh, you might say of a, um, of a two-part um, section here, but this is all basically one idea. It's talking about the Lord's coming, we need to be ready for it, and what uh, we can expect if, we're, if we are ready, and uh, what we can expect if we're not ready, what we can expect if we're faithful in doing what the Lord has called us to do and gifted us to do. Uh, and what we can expect uh, and if we can we're not faithful to, faithful to do what uh, he's, to do called what to do. Uh, he's called us to do. Now, the, um, now, the rewards the, uh, we're going to be looking at mainly this evening, this evening, but this morning we're going to be looking at the call to be ready for his coming and, of course, the advantages that come to us for being ready. So let me read Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 40. This is going to be our text for this morning. Uh, and um, uh, and um, ask, we'll ask that the ask Lord will grant us his, 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 grace. His, his grace. All right, this is what Jesus says. All right, this is what Jesus says. Be dressed, Be dressed in, readiness <coughs> in readiness and keep your lamps, keep lit. Your lamps lit. Be like men who are Be waiting like for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so, so that they may immediately open the door to him when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves are whom those the master will find master on the alert when he comes. The alert when he comes. Truly I say to you Truly that say to you he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them. Whether he comes in the second watch or even in the third and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. You too be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Well, may the Lord bless his word to our hearing this morning. Now, now, Again, I want to tie this into what we were looking at last week because it, this, is really it, this is really one sort of uh, sermon that our Lord is preaching to the crowd, crowd that was following him after he left the Pharisees' house. Now, last week, the now, last particular week, subject the that Jesus subject was dealing with was that of greed. He warned us against greed, asking us why we should spend our whole lives trying to gain the things that really are only going to get in our way. Let's not forget riches are a snare. If we have a lot, if won't we be lot, tempted to we trust be tempted that, to wealth trust that wealth for our security for in this world rather, this than, world trusting rather God. than trusting God? You know, when I think about this, I you know, can't help but think of George Muller. You know, George Muller, I guess his name is pronounced Muller, who trusted God who trusted every God single day every to, meet his day needs to meet his needs and the needs of the and thousands of orphans that he was ministering to. And you know what? He wasn't disappointed. God provided every single day. They never went without, even when the storehouse were actually, were actually completely empty. Completely empty. Somebody would show up Somebody at the door. With, door, with food, with, unexpectedly, with, food. with no announcements, no, you know, he wasn't broadcasting, no, he wasn't broadcasting it through the city, he was just praying to God, and the Lord would meet those needs. Well, that's what well, the Lord does, we need to trust Him. And what good will money good actually will do money us on the day when we stand before God? You know, it's not going to do us any good, unless we use it the way we should in this world while we have the opportunity. But then the question arose, don't we need money to live? of course we need money to live, but Jesus tells us not to trust that money to meet our needs, but to trust God. Remember how he said our Heavenly Father feeds the birds. He clothes the lilies of the field, which are essentially worthless, right? He will also care for us because he loves us so much more and we're so much more valuable to him that we don't need to worry. And remember Jesus says, worry doesn't help anyway. How can we change anything by our worrying? We can't. Only God can change anything. Change, and Jesus tells us and that Jesus he will tells us that he if we will. simply if we trust simply in him. Trust in him. When we learn to trust when God for our needs, for we, our can needs we can then become the stewards that he actually calls, us, actually to be. calls us to be and use what he has given us, what he has given for, us his glory. for his glory. Not only to support Not ourselves, but also to support, but also to support the work that he wants to do through us in this world. Remember what Solomon told us? When we give to the when poor, we give to the poor, we're lending to the Lord, lending to the Lord, and He will repay us will repay with something, us with better, something than money. better than money. He will give to us rewards, to us and, rewards. Those, and those rewards are essentially the power, essentially the power to, love him more to love Him more, so that we will enjoy, so him, we will enjoy him and heaven, and heaven more. more. 
More. Now, Jesus tells us now, that this Jesus is one us way that we are to be getting ready for heaven, by storing up our treasures there, so that our heart, our so desires, will, heart, also our desires will also be there. But there is another sense is in which sense we need to be ready, which he tells us to get ready, and that is to be personally ready for when the Lord comes to take us to be with him. To, be with to take us home to that to heaven that we so desire to be. Now, that's the subject that, now, that's Jesus, the subject now that Jesus now turns to. Now, turns to. As we get started on as this particular started subject, let me just say as a, you know, up front, a, you know, that this front. can be can be a bit confusing, a bit you know, this, confusing. This, whole area. You know, this, this whole area, because there are because at least three, three senses, senses in which, in which Jesus, Jesus is coming again. Is coming I know we again. often think of just one, but there's at least three. He's coming to He's coming gather to all the gather living and to raise the dead and to, and to bring everybody bring together for the final judgment. The we, call final judgment. The we call that the second coming. Now, we do know that in now, certain that in areas of, <coughs> areas excuse me, of the church, in certain schools of theology, there's, there's even like a, theology, there's there's even a halfway, like halfway coming, a halfway coming uh, of our Lord Jesus uh, Christ for another Jesus purpose. But we're talking about the ones where he actually does come, you know I mean, where he represents himself as coming. And by the way, that coming to rapture his church, we believe that's true. We believe that's true. We believe that's going to happen, but we believe that's going to be at the second coming and not, and not something, that something that happens seven years before. Seven years before. Well, he also, well, he also is going to come, or in those days he was coming, to bring judgment to bring against, judgment Jerusalem, against Jerusalem, Jerusalem in 70 AD. In 70 AD. And, then thirdly, and then thirdly, he was coming to he take, coming his, to his, take disciples his disciples and his people, everyone his who people, belongs, to him, who home, belongs to him home, at their death, at their death if that should occur before the second coming. So that's a coming of our Lord Jesus Christ as well, to take his saints to be home with him. And really, that's what and he's really, done for all of the saints who live between the time he said this and now. And now. So this morning, what I want so us to do is ask three, three questions about, questions about this text about that may this help, text us help us better understand and apply it. And I'm not going. I'm not, I'm not going, I'm saying that I'm going to resolve which particular coming this is. But I think perhaps, but I think perhaps, you know, since the main point is be ready, it may not matter quite so much. Okay. So what are the three questions? So well, first three of all, questions? what is well, Jesus all, talking about Jesus here? What, talking what about is this here? coming what that he's referring to? Secondly, what Secondly, were the disciples what to do in light of this? What are we to do in light of this? And then thirdly, what then thirdly, is our advantage, what is our advantage in, in getting ready you know, for doing ready, this or for his coming? So first of all, which of the three comings was Jesus speaking about here? And this is where we can at least understand what the options are. I don't think it would surprise us that if we were to poll everybody who's here this morning, that we might have differing views about what Jesus is speaking about here. We might very likely disagree among ourselves. Some of us may believe that he's talking about the second coming. The second coming when Jesus literally, physically returns from heaven to this earth to put an end to human history. History, at least in this world. In we, this do world. we do know human history is going to continue forever, forever in the new heavens and the, the new earth, but not like earth, it is here. Like it's going to be different. Here. And if we have time, we, we get into that. But the day when he but the day comes when back he again to call his people from the grave, to gather all who are alive to himself, when he brings everyone who has ever lived in the history of the world together in one place for the final judgment, when he brings about the final separation, casts unbelievers into the lake of fire, but welcomes believers into the new heavens into the and, new heavens the new earth. and the new that's earth. That's the second coming. That's the second coming. Okay. Now, some people now, believe that's what Jesus is talking about here. They think that Jesus is telling his disciples that he could come, he could for, them come for them at any at time. Any time. Now, there is a problem now, with that. There is a problem with that. The problem is, is, is the problem I've already is, is, is actually already expressed it in the uh, parable of the, the talents. Uh, parable of the, talents. The, master the master went away for a long time. A long time. Now, is now, is there anything in Scripture that would give us any idea that Jesus was not going to come the next day? Or he wasn't going to come in a month or maybe not in a year if you happen to be living at the time the disciples were living? Well, yeah, there is because Jesus was soon, probably within that year, going to give them 
year a job that was going to take a very long time to complete, and that job is called the Great Commission. You know, it's been 2,000 years, and it almost seems like we've only scratched the surface. There's still so much to be done. It doesn't seem likely, does it, that Jesus would be telling them to be ready for his second coming if if that was so far that off so far that it really off, wouldn't impact really or, wouldn't or, impact or, you know, or wouldn't be a part of their lives at all. Part of their lives at all. Now, let me, let me just say now, this. Me, it is possible that Jesus said what he said, not so much for their benefit, so much for their benefit but because but a future generation a future needed to hear this. I mean, we need, this. I mean, we need to hear this. We need to be ready for the second coming. But certainly it could not apply to them. And I came from a school that actually believed that when Jesus told them, for instance, in Matthew 24, what we've just read, be ready because he's going to come at a time you don't expect. They thought he meant the second coming, that Jesus could actually bring about the second coming within the next hour, within the next day. But the point is that couldn't happen. But there was another coming, was of, Jesus another coming of Jesus Christ that would affect that would them. Affect them. He is actually two. He is actually two. His coming in His judgment coming in against, against Jerusalem, in, Jerusalem 70 in 70 A.D. Now, when Jesus spoke now, these Jesus words, spoke it was about 30 A.D. And that event, and that event 70 A.D., was only about 40, only years, about away. 40 years away. And our Lord, we have and to understand have that to our understand Lord was our often Lord referring was often to this particular coming, this particular coming when, he when He spoke about His coming, about again. His coming again. Let me give you one example. Let me give you one example. When Jesus was on, when trial, Jesus was on trial, Caiaphas said to Him in Matthew, Matthew 26, 26, verses 63 through, verses 63 through 64, 64. Yeah. I, adjure you, I adjure you by the living God, by the living God that you tell us you whether tell you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said, to him, you have said it yourself. Nevertheless, I tell you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Now the question is, what did Jesus mean by that when he told Caiaphas? Did he mean that Caiaphas was going to see Jesus seated on the throne and see him coming again at a time when he would be in hell because, you know, Jesus hasn't come yet. Caiaphas died. And Caiaphas has yet to see this. Is that what he He's talking that about, he's talking that he's going to see it from hell, it from or did he hell. mean that Caiaphas, mean would, that Caiaphas would, would live to see his exaltation to the right hand of God? By the way, Caiaphas the did, way, live, Caiaphas to did that. live to see that. Um, um, for instance, Peter for instance, tells us uh, Peter tells in his us sermon on the day of Pentecost, sermon, I mean, how, did they know how did they know that Jesus had been exalted to the right hand of God, that he was crowned with all this authority and power? How did they know that it had taken place? They knew it because of the day of Pentecost. Caiaphas actually lived to see this. Listen to what, um, um, what uh, Peter uh, says in his sermon in Acts chapter 2, verses 33 through 36. He says, therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received and having from received the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. By, the way, by the way, Jesus said he was going to heaven to receive this promise and to send him. And to send so him. having so done having that and having done received that, the promise, received he, the has promise he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended into heaven, but he himself but says, he himself the Lord says, said to my Lord, Lord, sit at my right hand my until right I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. Christ. This Jesus whom this you, Jesus have you have crucified. How did Caiaphas How did know Caiaphas that Jesus know was at the right hand of God? Of right hand of because God. of the outpouring because of the Holy Spirit. The of the Holy Spirit. And then did he mean, then, did he mean or, could he have meant also, or could he have meant also that Caiaphas would that live Caiaphas to see his coming in judgment against Jerusalem, against Jerusalem, which was 40 years which in the future? Now, in the future. now I don't know whether he now, did or not, but it was certainly possible. One thing we need to bear in mind is when Jesus uses the imagery of Coming on a cloud, on what a cloud. he's doing is what borrowing, doing from, is the borrowing from the Old Testament imagery. The, the image that the, the Lord the uses the Lord when he comes when in he judgment comes against in judgment the nation. Let me just give you one example where Isaiah writes where Isaiah about writes the Lord's coming in judgment, Lord's against, coming Egypt. In judgment against Egypt. In Isaiah 19, in verse, Isaiah 1. 19 verse 1. The oracle, concerning, the oracle Egypt. concerning Egypt. Behold, the Lord is Behold, coming Lord on a swift cloud and is, cloud and is about to come to Egypt. The idols of Egypt, the idols will, tremble of Egypt will tremble at his presence and, his presence and the heart of the Egyptians the will the Egyptians melt within will them. By the way, if we had time to look at this, time, we'll, also look at this. we'll also see that oftentimes with this imagery of the Lord riding on a cloud, as it were, 
as it were, you know, picturing himself you know, picturing as a great himself, conqueror, a great riding, conqueror out riding out to conquer, out to conquer but, his chariot, but his chariot is a cloud, you see, because he's see, God, and he rides, God, on the cloud. he rides on the clouds. The clouds are his chariots, the but he's coming chariots, in he's judgment. Coming the in other judgment. image that is often used when, when, when the Lord does this is the darkening of the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the stars falling from the heavens. That imagery is used over and over again to talk about the overthrow of political powers. Powers. So what's, what's the point? So what's, the point is the that point Jesus was is telling Jesus Caiaphas, was telling that, he Caiaphas live, that he would live to see his coming, to see in, his judgment coming in judgment against Jerusalem, against Jerusalem for, their for their crucifying of the Messiah. Jesus was not Jesus saying here that his coming would be a literal coming, 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 coming any more than when the Lord came against Egypt. Came he didn't come down, Egypt, come down literally to destroy Egypt, but rather he used a foreign army, which he often does, to destroy nations or even to chase his own people. In this, case, in this case, what Jesus meant what Jesus was, was that he would bring the armies of Rome against his people, against his and he would bring judgment, would bring judgment upon them. Upon Caiaphas, them. Would Caiaphas would see these things see come, these to things pass. come to pass. So, um, so, of course, um, okay, of so, course okay, so this coming, is it the second coming? coming? Is this coming, coming, is it the coming in judgment in 70 AD? There is one more possibility, and that is, and that is he's coming for them coming at for them their at death. death. Uh, this is something that could, uh, this happen, something that could happen at any time, especially in their line of work, right? The disciples, they were martyred. Many of them were martyred. Many of them were martyred. So, so Jesus is saying his coming could be that as well. That as well. Now let me just mention one now, let me other just thing, mention because one other thing because it's upset. Because it's upset. This is a very difficult this subject, very and, difficult as subject and as we look at what Jesus is actually Jesus saying here, actually some of these things might wait us one direction. Some of them might wait us another direction. Us clearly, another what he talks about this evening, about this evening is, going the the is going to be the condition of those who hear him after they are dead. So, is that? 70 AD? 70 AD? It really can't be the second really coming, not, the at second coming not at that time frame. Is it when he comes is at death? Comes is he talking death? about for future generations? future generations? It is possible that, our, is Lord possible possible that our Lord Jesus really wasn't Jesus trying to really distinguish, trying which, to coming, distinguish okay? which coming. Okay? That sometimes, that happens, as sometimes well. happens as well. We do know that some prophecies that some have prophecies more than have one fulfillment, don't we? Think about what the Lord says to Isaiah in Isaiah 7.14. Therefore, the Lord himself, Therefore, will, give the Lord you a himself sign. will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin, Behold, will, be a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his and name call Emmanuel. His name what, is that Emmanuel. Referring to? what is that referring to? Well, Matthew tells us well, Matthew that tells Isaiah was talking about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, and, and he was, and talking, and about he was Jesus. talking about Jesus. But we often don't understand, often don't that, understand that, that, that this prophecy had to do with another child as well. A child that would be born in the days of King Ahaz. This was supposed to be a sign to him that the king the two, the two kingdoms, kingdoms that were threatening, kingdoms him were threatening him would shortly no longer be a threat, no a threat as we threat, actually as go we on to read in verse 16, 16 of Isaiah, of Isaiah chapter, 7. chapter 7. For before the For boy before the will boy know enough will to refuse enough evil, to and, choose evil good, and choose good, the land whose, the two, land kings whose two, dread two kings you dread will be forsaken. Will be forsaken. So this particular so this prophecy actually had a double fulfillment. He was talking fulfillment. about this child that would be born in the days of King Ahaz, of King and before Ahaz that child gets, that gets old enough to uh, be able to refuse uh, evil and choose good, those, choose those two kings that you're concerned about, their land's going to be forsaken. You don't have to worry about them anymore. Now, Isaiah or the Lord is not saying that there was another virgin birth taking place in those days, because the word virgin, as you've probably heard before, can also mean young woman. And in this case, it would mean that, but in the case of our our Lord Jesus, it definitely, Jesus refers it definitely refers to a virgin. A virgin. So, a prophecy so can have a double reference, and perhaps the Lord has all of these comings in mind. These comings in mind. That brings us to the second point, which, the which is the most point, important thing we need to see about this. What are we supposed, to do? Are we supposed to do in view of this coming? In view of this whatever coming it may be, what were they to do? Jesus says, be ready. Be ready. Ready. Look at verses 35 through 36. Be dressed in Be dressed readiness in and, readiness keep your lamps lit. and keep your lamps lit. Be like men who are like waiting, for their, waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so that they may immediately so they may open the door to him door when he him comes when he and comes knocks. What, what does this sound like? What, what does this, sound like? This, this sounds like an abbreviated like version an abbreviated of the parable of the ten virgins, doesn't it? The same circumstances. Be ready. 
Be ready. Be dressed in readiness, dressed in readiness for, your master's return. for your master's return. Keep your lamps Keep your lit. Lamps Remember lit. the ten virgins, Remember the and, ten virgins and, and how there were five wise and five foolish and the five foolish forgot to, to bring oil and they had to go to the and dealers to, to buy the some while they were gone. Some, the bridegroom came. They weren't ready and so they missed out, right? The wise were ready. They were waiting. They had oil. Their lamps were lit. All they all Really, the next thing that had to happen was the bridegroom was to come and they would go with him. The only difference really between those two is this. Here, they're waiting for their master's return from the wedding feast. And in the ten virgins, they were waiting for him to go into the wedding feast. And really, what's the difference? The difference may be the emphasis here is more on readiness. Be ready when he comes. Now, they needed to be ready at all times because they didn't know when the master was coming. Jesus tells them it would actually be when they least expected it. Remember how Jesus says his coming is like a thief and the thief Thief doesn't, doesn't come in broad daylight when you're in the house and awake in the house and, and ready or ex- and ready at least or prepared. Ex- at least prepared. He comes at a time when you don't expect in the middle of the night so he can catch you so can catch off you guard. guard. They needed to be ready. Well, they what did they need to be ready for? Well, for his coming, well, in, for 70 his coming AD, in 70 AD, certainly. Certainly. And for his coming, for at, his their coming death, at their death because, because, because they, didn't they, exactly they, because they didn't know exactly when that would be. And it would be obviously at an unexpected time and most likely after Jesus had left. Had left. We also we need also to be obviously, to be ready. obviously ready. ready. Now, we don't need to be ready now, for 70 AD because that, that was many centuries ago, right? Centuries That's, already ago, right? That's already taken place. But we do need to be ready for the, ready for the second coming. We do need to be ready we do need for, the to be ready for the day of our death. Those things are, Those things are still ahead of us. Ahead of and us. they are still and certain. They are still certain. Now we don't know when these now, things are going to take place. Do we? Second coming, second coming might be near. Might be near. Um, how near um, we believe it to be we really depends on our view of last things, doesn't it? Some of, things, some of us might see it further off. Some of us might see it closer. Um, let me just give you one argument that might argue for its being a little bit further off, and that is uh, the Great Commission. I mean, how close are we I mean, to completing the Great Commission? Have all the nations heard all about Jesus Christ? Jesus how long is it going to take to get the message out? There are thousands there are of people, thousands groups, out of people there groups out there that have not yet heard the gospel. Heard is the gospel? Jesus going to come in his second coming before the gospel reaches them? If not, if not, his coming is still a long ways off. I, I don't think off. it's going to be going within to be our within lifetime our unless lifetime, somehow the church can get mobilized and get that message, out, and get that message within out within the next couple of decades. The, next couple of decades. the day of our death. The day of our death. That's near, right? That's to be near, nearer than we right? think. To be nearer than we think. Possibly when we least Possibly expect when it. We least expect I mean, think about, um, I mean, think about um, David Haney. David you know, Haney, the gentleman that you know, was working for our denomination, a ruling elder, elder who was taking care of our ministerial care ministerial committee care and was helping the ministers with ministers investments and retirement and so forth. He was going into a gym going into in, a a gym, in a hotel in a just hotel, to get some cardio. To get some cardio. He was on the treadmill. He was on the treadmill. And, and shortly after he started, shortly he had a heart attack and he was gone. You know, you, we don't know. He wasn't you, expecting that. He wasn't expecting that. And we don't know we when don't know our death when is going death to come, is going so we come, need to so be we ready. Need to be ready. So how do we get ready for that? So how do we get ready for that? Well, we have to trust, well, we make, sure to trust, trust make sure we're trusting in Jesus. Making sure that we're making repenting sure that of our we're sins. Repenting Remember of our that no sins. true Remember believer is no going, to be, is going to be comfortable living with any living with disobedience any in their lives. They're going to try to become as much like Jesus as possible. So turning from our sins, reading his word, surrendering to his will, following his word. That's how we get ready for that coming. That we're going to look at a little bit more. For this evening. For this evening. But then finally, but then okay, finally so, okay, so we need to, well, Jesus is coming, well, and we talked about those comings. We need to be ready. Finally, what is the advantage of watching of and watching waiting and being, and ready, waiting for his being ready for his coming? Well, Jesus tells us well, the Jesus advantage is blessing, right? Blessing. Right? Blessing. Blessing is what we Blessing all want, what I, we think. All want I think. Uh, this is how we get it. This is how we he, get says it. He says in verse 38, whether he comes in the second he watch, or, in even the in the third, watch third, or even in the third and finds them so, and finds them so ready, with ready with their lamps lit, lit dressed in readiness, lit, dressed in readiness. Blessed, are those slaves. Are those slaves. Second watch is, Second is really watch between, is nine and between 9 and midnight. Third watch is between third midnight and 3. And the third watch is the third most watch likely the time the thief would, the thief would come, would come. Uh, because the time you'd be uh, least, the time you'd be expecting. least so expecting. So if you're so ready even at the least, you know, most unexpected times, you are blessed. 
blessed. And what is the blessing and that our Lord, is talking, that our Lord is talking about? Here? Well, I think it's the blessing, well, of, it's the the blessing the, of the, the, the fullness of salvation. Fullness right? of salvation right? What it is that our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ has to give us as our inheritance. As our inheritance. Uh, the kingdom of uh, heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Uh, Jesus says this uh, in, verse says this in verse, verse 37. Blessed are those Blessed slaves are whom those the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table. Them recline at the and table will come up and, and wait on him. And wait on him. Now, now, just just one just, point just I one think that we need to think about here is Jesus telling us that in his state of glorification he's going to humble himself and have us sit down and serve us like a servant. I think commentators think don't commentators don't believe that that's likely what's going to happen, particularly happen, because he has been glorified, he has he's king and, king and ruler over all, over all it's things. Unlikely it's unlikely he would do what he did at the Last, supper, the last supper and stoop down and serve, and down and serve the rest of his people. The but it certainly means this, but it certainly means this that he will welcome us into this kingdom with his whole heart and share the glories of that kingdom with us forever. We do need to remember that what he's talking about here is a parable. And the parable doesn't... You know, it doesn't always have a one-to-one -one correlation, correlation, but it does mean, it again, does mean blessing, again, blessing of being, received, of being into received into the kingdom and receiving all that our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, Christ has, for Christ has for us. Now, that's certainly going now to happen going when to happen he comes for us again at the second coming, right? Following the judgment, the Lord is going to say Lord to those, going who, belong to those, to those who, who belong to him in verse 34, uh, 34 of Matthew 25, 34 of Matthew 25 come, you who, come you, come you who are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Foundation of the world. Those, are the Those are the words, by the way, you, the want, way, to hear you want to hear from the Lord Jesus from Christ, Lord and Jesus you will only Christ, hear them if you, are ready, them if you are ready when he comes. When he comes. I think something similar think something is going to happen when he comes for us at death. He's going to welcome us into heaven, and there's going to be great and joy and great blessing joy and in his blessing presence. In and by the way, if you, by the way if, you, you know, if you're in heaven with him when you die, you know that you're going to hear those words on the day of judgment, come thou, blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. By the way, with regard to AD 70, if that was what he was referring to as well, with regard to the disciples being ready, his coming in judgment against Jerusalem, we know from history that the disciples that who the disciples listened to, who Jesus, listened warning to Jesus warning and realized that he was talking about, was 70 talking AD, about 70 AD they were ready they were ready and they did what Jesus said those, those who were in the city get out of the city those who were in the country did not enter into the city but they fled to the mountains and they were safe and they were safe we're going to see later, we're in, we're going to see later in, in Luke's gospel Luke's Jesus is going to say when you see Jerusalem surrounded by her enemies know that her desolation is near then he says Get out of there as quickly as you can. So, you know, if you, so, if you <laughs> were not... We're not forewarned by Jesus, forewarned you by could Jesus, get trapped in the city, and, in the city and, and those again who heard, again who heard listened, and listened, and they were blessed, and they were blessed because they didn't have to suffer God's vengeance, God's against, vengeance his against his people for crucifying, his, people for crucifying, his, son. crucifying his son. You know, that's what AD you know, 70 was all about. God was bringing judgment, was bringing on, the judgment Jews on the Jews for crucifying, for crucifying their Messiah. Their Messiah. Okay. Now, even Christians, now, even I think some Christians, Christians actually got trapped in the city and they had to go through that. That happens, but that happens, it wasn't directed against wasn't them. Directed it was directed against, against the Jews. But so if you're mixed in with the people that are being judged, you know, it can judged, happen, you know, to you can happen to you too. Well, again, the point is well, we again, also need to be ready, don't we? Because we do not know when the Lord is coming for us. For us. So make sure that you're so trusting sure him. That you're trusting him. Make sure that you're turning, sure from, that your you're turning from your sins. Make sure you're doing sure what the Lord tells you to do in his word. In his because word. those moral because principles, those moral principles never, never change, do they? Change, they are always they? relevant, they are always relevant to, every to every society because morality, because morality does, morality does, morality not, does change. not change. Now this evening we're going now to look more at what we need to do to be ready. And how what we do here while we're living, how we live how we live is going to be the basis on, be on which the Lord is going to meet out rewards, rewards, or if we don't know Him, we don't know Him, punishments, punishments, and that will depend, that will depend really, really, on our faithfulness. Our faithfulness is really going to show whether we know Him, whether we know Him, or we do not know Him. We do not know Him. So I would encourage you to come so back to see for that. Well, let's let's just bow in a moment of prayer, shall we? Let's ask the Lord to apply what we've heard and help us. 
to think about to think about whether or not we're ready whether because, or you know what, ready, um, because you know what um, whether or not we're ready whether or is, not we're is ready is is the same, same same thing we need to think about as we come to the table isn't it? Table, isn't it? if we can come to the if table and eat and drink and be blessed by this we are ready we are ready but if we can't but if we're not ready we're not ready so let's let's spend a bit of time in prayer let the lord search our hearts